Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly thank and praise the Lord for his grace and his mercy, his love that he has shown toward us. Amen. We praise him for another day's journey, another opportunity to get into the word of God. As the Bible says, it's able to build us up and give us that inheritance that are among them that are sanctified. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer on this evening, we certainly do want to pray for um, Evangelist Arrington's son, Jamil, uh, that the Lord will bless him and uh, as he's still in the hospital, that the Lord will bless him and encourage his heart. Um, also, too, pray for my brother, Sylvester, uh, not Sylvester, uh, Adol, and he's in the hospital as well. I uh, pray that the Lord touch his body. Send for healing and deliverance. Uh, any other prayer requests? All right. We certainly want to pray um, for the success of the service on today. Let something be said and done to encourage us to inspire our hearts. Amen. And we certainly. Blessings that he has given unto us. All right. We want to ask the church to stand. All right. Let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you and praise you for your grace and mercy and love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for having you blessed each and every one of us, even on this hour, to come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask you, Lord, that you bless. Uh, the Bible study on tonight. Let something be said and done to inspire our hearts, to encourage us as we see the day approaching. And we also ask, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known, even in unspoken requests. Lord, we ask you to send forth healing, send forth deliverance, Lord, and breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we bless you to continue to strengthen our hearts and our spirit. Grant, Lord, the door of utterance in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit rest, rule, and abide. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. I want you to turn with me on tonight uh, to the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter number 4. And uh, generally, uh, Timothy would be described as Minister's Manual, and 1st, 2nd Timothy, and Titus, um, uh, written uh, as a ministerial manual. Uh, but uh, tonight it will serve as we all are ministers in Christ, that we may uh, glean from this information, that we may apply it to our hearts. Amen. God wants us to his word to our hearts. And we all are ministers of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That sounds good. Ministers of Christ. <laughs> Servants of the Lord. And Jesus said, Why callest thou me Lord and doest not the things that I say? And then he said at one other time, uh, who was his brother and sister? He said, those that do the will of my Father. Amen? And that's our goal, isn't it? To do the will of him that sent us. As we look at uh, uh, Timothy uh, chapter number 4 and uh, verse number 1, it says, Now the Spirit uh, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Amen. And uh, what I want you to focus in on tonight is uh, what is being said, what is being said. Uh, because certainly, uh, as we preached on Sunday, uh, we're living in the last days, in the last time. And uh, the Lord is really after something 
uh, for the saints of God so that we won't ourselves become distracted, distracted by what we see is going on. So in this book, uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 4, verse number 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. And the Spirit uh, here is referring to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. And if we were to just hold that and go over to the book of St. John, uh, St. John chapter uh, 16 and uh, verse 13. I want you to see something. Uh, St. John chapter 16 and verse 13. And hold, don't, uh, hold, hold where we were so we can go back to it. But St. John chapter 16, verse 13. It says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. That's still talking about the Holy Ghost. The spirit of truth. So that tells us something about the Holy Ghost. It speaks the truth. Amen. It's the spirit of truth. He said, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Ghost is a guide, it's a leader. It leads you into how much truth? All, all truth. <laughs> For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and shall show you things, what? To come. And that's what's happening in that verse, uh, uh, First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. The Holy Ghost is speaking, is talking, amen? And it's not speaking and talking of its own, of his own, but he's speaking and talking what he has heard, amen? amen. And he's literally, the Holy Ghost is showing us then things to come, things to come. The Holy Ghost is like a prophet here. It's prophesied and letting us know uh, of the things to come. And notice what we said earlier. It's the spirit of truth. So it's telling you the truth and it cannot lie. Yes. Amen? Cannot lie. Truth uh, uh, and cannot lie. Y'all with me? All right. So, um, Hold that, not hold that, but uh, uh, go to uh, Revelations chapter number three. Chapter number three. And uh, verse, I want to, there's a number of verses in there that we could go to, but I got to expedite my time. Uh, drop down then to verse 22. Hallelujah. It says, He that hath an ear, let him what? Hear. Hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So the Holy Ghost is speaking. Amen. And he says, Let him that hath an ear do what? Hear. Hear. And that hear there means Listen with the intent to obey. It literally means lean in. Lean in. Pay attention. Focus. You know, when someone really wants to tell you something, sometimes we have a tendency to just, you know, turn our head away and not really listen to what the person is saying. Uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, the Spirit, is wants you to lean in and pay attention. Sometimes I ask my wife something. I said, uh, who said such, such, such? And she may answer me, but if, if I'm looking at TV, I really haven't focused on what she is saying, then I may go back to the question. She'll say, well, I already told you. You weren't paying attention. You follow me? Same way with the spirit of truth. Amen? The Holy Ghost speaks to us. Uh, and it's speaking to us truth. 
So he's saying, he that hath an ear, uh, an ear to the soul, an ear to want to be saved, an ear to want to be delivered, lean in. Amen. Lean in and pay attention. Huh? Listen up. Because the, the, the soul that you save will be your own. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Now notice, then, he says, he that hath an ear, let him what? Hear what the Spirit is saying unto what? The churches. The Holy Ghost speaks to the churches. Uh, if we were to really get doctrinal uh, on you tonight, uh, Jesus, he literally went away. Amen. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Ghost is really doing the ministry of Jesus down here on this earth. That's why he said, I got to go away and I'm going to send you uh, another comforter. So when you hear the, the voice of Jesus, it's really the Holy Ghost speaking to you, interpreting the voice of Jesus uh, as an intercessor. Uh, for you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, so the Holy Ghost is speaking to the churches. Amen? To the individual churches or collectively the body of Christ. And it's speaking that which it had, it had heard. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So it's our job to pay attention. Amen? It's our job to take heed. You know, that's why John said in the scriptures, he said, uh, you don't have need of one to teach you, amen, the, the Holy Ghost or the Spirit will teach you, uh, simply meaning this, it doesn't say that you don't need an earthly teacher, it's saying that the Holy Ghost will, 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 because if you have it, it will help to interpret the word of God so that you can be able to grasp it and understand it. Yeah. Amen. It's like having your own personal tutor. Hallelujah. <laughs> your own personal teacher. Yeah. Amen. Your own personal trainer with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. My God. My God. Y'all with me tonight? All right. So let's go back over then to uh, 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 1 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse number 1. He said, he said then, uh, the Spirit it speaketh expressly. That word expressly literally means plainly, with clarity. Amen? The Holy Ghost will speak to you plainly with clarity. Yes. Amen? Uh, why? Because it wants to guide you into all truth. You don't want a guy that's, that's, that, that, can't, that can't talk. Amen? That, that, that can't speak to you plainly. Sometimes... You know, I order me some books and I get to read them, and they they use so much language that I need a dictionary to understand what they're talking about. Because uh, uh, of what? They're not speaking plainly. Amen? Not speaking plainly. I love books where I can read and it's plain English. Amen? I can understand it. I can follow it. Amen? The Holy Ghost is like that. Amen? It's, it, 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 it'll lead you and guide you if you let it. Uh, if you let it, let this mind be in you. Let it. All right, now notice what he's saying. I got to move on, Lord, help me, Jesus. He said, now the Spirit speaketh plainly. That's what that expressly means. Notice, that in the latter times, some shall do what? Depart from the faith. Now, it's prophesied. Uh, and the prophecy is now. It's happening now. Right. Amen. It's yeah. being fulfilled now. Uh, notice, he says, and some shall depart from the faith. Now, uh, 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 he's talking about the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Yes. Uh, uh, the baptism in Jesus' name, being filled with the Holy Ghost, living holy. Yes. Amen. Uh, serving the Lord with gladness. Uh, all of that and, 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 and holiness. Without the which, no man shall see the Lord. And, and some shall depart from that. And that word, that word depart, it literally means, it doesn't, it meant, that doesn't just simply mean to leave. Amen. But it, it means to, have you ever had somebody that's disgruntled with you? And when they leave, they cause a big commotion. 
uh, and, and literally try to take out as many as uh, they can with them, cause as much destruction as possible. Uh, that's what that depart means, uh, to, to cause a commotion, to cause a disturbance, to cause schisms and divisions uh, on their way out. Amen? Now, also, too, what, what this means is that, that they may depart from the faith, but not from the building. Uh, not from the building. Amen. Not necessarily from the building. Yes, Just come in causing destruction and, 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 and commotion, trying to kill, steal, and destroy yes. as many as they can uh, uh, while, while, they're, while they're operating in the building. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they're, they're leaving the building, but they've left the faith. Amen? Left what they believe. Uh, left the very foundations of the doctrine. Amen? Uh, now that should tell us something. That the very foundations of the doctrine is very important. Amen? It's very necessary. Uh, it's necessary for us to continue in the doctrine. Uh, it's necessary for us to continue in the doctrine of the apostles. Because uh, Jesus handed it to them. Uh, he commissioned them, didn't he? If we were to go to St. Matthew chapter number, uh, uh, what is it, 24 uh, and, uh, or 26, it tells us that, 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 that Christ commissioned them. He said, go ye out and preach the gospel, baptize them. Uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, which they, they understood to be baptizing in the name of Jesus, didn't it? And then he says, teach all nations. Teaching is important because that simulates, that, that brings about a kingdom. Amen? Uh, you got to be taught. Uh, you got to receive commandments uh, uh, in order to be a part of the kingdom. Uh, that's why, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. That's why it was so important for Moses to go up into Mount Sinai and to receive the Ten Commandments from God. Why? Because those commandments would establish them as a kingdom. Uh, and God would literally be their king. Uh, hallelujah. And, and that's why when Moses got upset the first time and broke them, uh, and, and he had to go back, hallelujah, and read and get them again, uh, and bring them back so it, it would establish them as a kingdom. Without it, without commandments, without doctrine, without teaching, uh, you, you, which you have chaos. Uh, you don't have a government. Uh, hallelujah. You need, you need the word of God. Hallelujah. You need his commandment. Amen. To, to establish you as a part of the kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And those that that don't follow after the commandments, they're lawbreakers. Amen? Uh, and they, they receive punishment and judgment, don't they? Y'all with me tonight? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Uh, that's why he, he says, seek ye first, but the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness. The reason why he said his righteousness, his, 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 his way of doing things. Amen? There's a culture that God, that God establishes with his people. Uh, hallelujah. We got to assimilate to, our, to the culture uh, of, of what God has established. Thank you, Lord. We can't just go be rogue and do what we want to do. Amen. Amen. We got to do what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let me move on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now notice, he said, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, when is this going to happen? In the latter times, and now is the time. Thank you, Lord. This is the latter times. Amen? He says, some shall what? Depart from the faith. Depart from what they first believed. And I'm sure that each and every one of us sitting here tonight uh, can think of somebody that has departed from the faith. Uh, from what they first believed. Preaching, teaching, damnable doctrines. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hey, uh, and I'm sure you don't have to search back far in your mind to think about somebody that has departed. Amen? And the Holy Ghost has prophesied it because it's the spirit of truth 
that this is what's going to be going on. Amen. Amen. Now notice, he said, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits. Now, uh, 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 in order for spirits, uh, generally we think spirits are just flying around uh, and, and moving around. Generally, that's what we think. But, but in order for spirits to operate here in this realm, they, you know, they got to inhabit somebody. Uh, and that's called demon possession. Amen? Spirits attach themselves to people uh, and, and they uh, teach these damnable doctrines. Amen? Amen? They bring it in. They gain your confidence. Uh, the devil literally transforms them into angels of light. Amen? Amen? Huh? Y'all with me? Thank you. So, so we don't, we don't want to be deceived. Amen. We don't want to be deceived. Amen. There's people that, that are possessed by the devil uh, that, that are after you. Amen. To move you away from your steadfastness to take you out of the will of God. Yes. Amen. Not everybody that's for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So the Bible says, know a tree by its fruits. Amen. No a tree by its what? Fruit. Its fruits. A corrupt tree can't bring forth good fruit. Neither can a good tree bring forth corrupt fruit. Yes. Amen. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. So be wise. Watch. Amen. Now, notice what he said. He says, uh, they'll give heed to what? Seducing spirits. The spirits that, that are seducing, that, that are seductive. Uh, that'll charm the pants off of you, so to speak. Uh, that, 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 that speak great swelling words. Uh, uh, watch. People have given in to that. And notice, uh, he said, I've got to move on. Uh, uh, seducing spirits and what? Now notice, doctrines of devils. That means the, uh, 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 Satan has his own doctrine. Uh, he has his own doctrine. Like as Christ has his doctrine, Satan has his doctrine. Yes. Amen? And you know, I ain't deep into it, but I know they got their own, uh, I don't want to call it a Bible, but I know they got their own Bible. Yeah. Amen? Witchcraft. Demonic. Yes. Amen? Doctrine. Got his own doctrine. And, and, and that tells you something now about, about the importance of doctrine. Amen. Doctrine, it, it transforms you. Yes. Huh? That's why it says, be not conformed, but be what? Yes. Transformed by what? Renew. What renews your mind is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Huh? You've got to get that doctrine within you. Yes. Amen. That's what transforms you. If you don't have his doctrine, you've got the doctrine of devils. Amen. It's either good or evil. It's no in between. Huh? It's either good or evil. Yeah. And, and you know, what I, what I like about this is, what I'm teaching right now, is, is the fact that uh, uh, the only good doctrine is God's doctrine. Yeah. Huh? All other doctrine is evil. Huh? 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 If you're going to live by it. You follow me? Thank you. Know, I don't care if it's Confucius. I don't care if it's Plato. I don't care if it's uh, 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 Aristotle. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't care if, it, if it's, if it's Whippy Goldberg or uh, what's that other woman? Uh, the one that got all the money to be giving away the free cards. Oprah. Oprah, yeah. I don't care if it's her doctrine. Uh, thank you, Lord. Or I don't care if it's uh, Dr. Phil. Uh, uh, whatever. Buddha. Buddha uh, all of that is doctrines of devils. Uh, if it's not originating from God, it's evil. <laughs> uh, it's corruptible. Why? Because it can't save you. Uh, 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 Zen, uh, all of that, wicked. Uh, 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 what's that? Yoga. When you really get into yoga and meditation, it, it deals with doctrines of devils. Yes. Uh, Doctrines of devils. The only good doctrine, the only good thing, as James says, is from above. 
Huh? It comes down from the Father of Lights. Yes. <laughs> All other everything else is evil. Yes. Huh? Thank you, Lord. My God. Uh, I'm gonna probably give me some emails today. Hallelujah! But I'm ready for it. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Everything else is evil. It's a doctrine of devils. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. No good thing uh, can come from man uh, other than what God puts in man. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. My God. My God. We're not good of ourselves. Uh, uh, we're corrupt. The <laughs> only good thing in us is God. Huh? Hallelujah. My God. My God. All right. Now notice this. Notice. He says, people give heed to it. That means they listen to it and obey it. You don't want to lean in and listen to doctrines of devils. Amen? Notice. Uh, uh, and, and doctrines of devils, he's, what, he's, what he's really trying to show you is, do uh, you remember in the book of Ephesians where he says, talks about Jesus uh, uh, ascended high above? Well, uh, we'll, go, we'll, go, we'll go the other way. Where the scripture talks about uh, uh, principalities, powers, Rulers, spiritual wickedness, and I, that's doctrines of devils. Amen. The hierarchy. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all with me tonight? Uh, the devil is real. Uh, his kingdom is real. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and we cannot uh, 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 be ignorant of Satan's devices. That's what, that's what we're after tonight in the Bible study. Thank you, Lord, because you don't want to be moved away from your steadfastness. Why? Because the Spirit has already prophesied. The Spirit of truth said that some shall. You don't want to be part of that some. <laughs> you want to have your mind made up and your heart fixed. Amen? Uh, that, that I won't be a part of that some. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, thank you. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, now look. He says, some uh, uh, taking heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Notice, doing what? Speaking, lies. Speaking what? Lies. Speaking lies. That's what the devil does. He's a deceiver. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And he's going to use people to speak to you. Amen? He'll come at you uh, 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 through your thoughts. But he'll also come at you through people, through teaching. And you know, y'all, uh, y'all, 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 uh, what was that probably? That was probably in the 90s. I'm thinking Jim Jones, uh, and all that, had all them people in them cults drinking that, drinking that Kool-Aid to kill themselves. Seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. And, and you know, there's some stuff like that going on now. Amen. Huh? Stuff like that. Yeah. Thank you. We got to be careful. Notice, uh, 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 speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with what? Hot iron. With a hot iron. Now, you you may say, uh, wow, you know that. Uh, what he's referring to here is is people that can go into a school or to uh, a, a mall and just shoot up everybody. Yes. Just kill up everybody. Yes. Conscience seared uh, with a hot eye. What, what that is saying is this. You know, uh, there's people that are corrupt. There are people that are evil. Uh, and they'll do corrupt things and evil things because their conscience is seared. That, 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 that searing is like, I don't know if you've ever uh, 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 burned your hand on a stove or something like that. And, and if you burnt it, uh, I won't say good enough, but, but, but you know, you deaden the feeling on it. You deaden the feeling on it. That, that flesh has been seared. The nerve endings have, 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 have been damaged. Amen? So it's past feeling. Now, that's what happens in the spiritual 
to those that, that listen to doctrines of devils. Their, 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 their conscience becomes seared. Amen. Past feeling, past emotion of, 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 of righteousness, past feeling of emotion of doing right, past feeling and emotion from, from helping your brother or sister, not, not even considering the destruction, amen, that, that they're going to bring about. Why? Because their conscience has been seared. No, no, no feeling, no, no, no righteousness. No, no, no deliverance, no love, amen, no compassion, huh, my God, that's how, that's how come they're able to do the things uh, that they do. I've often wondered, and when God, God showed it, he revealed it to me today, I often wondered, I said, Lord, how can people really go in uh, uh, to a place and just shoot up everybody, just kill everybody, amen, uh, and then turn around and kill themselves. Why? Because their conscience has been seared. Amen. No feeling, no emotion of righteousness, no consciousness of God. Amen. Uh, you don't want to deal with people like that. <laughs> you don't want them to be your counselor. You don't want them to be your buddy. The Bible says don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, uh, nor stand in the way of sinners. Uh, uh, Minister Quinn, I'm up. When you say that, it brought back my attention with 9-11. Yes. Terrorist attacks. The, 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 the guys were on the plane. Yeah. They, their mind was sealed, and they was on this on this mission that, that they going to kill the people on the plane to sacrifice other people to death. Right. How their minds were just sealed just to do that. Don't know nobody, don't know anybody on that plane. But they're going to kill themselves yes. in order to kill others to make a point. Right. Now notice, they've been doctrinated. Amen. They, they look at Americans as infidels. Amen. Doctrinated. And, and part of their indoctrination is that uh, when they do that, uh, jihad, when they do that, they, they, they kill others and, and, and then what's going to happen to them, they'll get a, a number of virgins when they, when they go to heaven. <laughs> huh, what kind of mess is that? <laughs> that's, not, that's not God. Amen. Amen. The way to heaven is through Christ. <laughs> hey, but but they've been, uh, that's a doctrine of the devil. Amen. Amen. And when people give heed to that, they gave heed to it, didn't they? Huh? They gave heed to it to the point where they literally gave their life. Amen? Amen. Uh, that's, that's wicked. Seared conscience. Past feeling. Amen? You don't, you don't want to, to, to be past feeling. You can uh, uh, commit sin and, and, and have no repentance. Commit sin and have no remorse. Amen? Uh, that's a bad place to be. Thank you, Jesus. That's a bad place to be. People are like that. Amen? People are like that. You don't want to be like that. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right? Uh, we're in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. God, I got to hurry up. <laughs> and verse number 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, uh, and I'm going to move on uh, uh, because I want to come to my point. Now, uh, Paul is, is saying that, that the Spirit is speaking to us. Yes. Am I right? Amen. It's speaking plainly to us that some shall depart from the faith. Some people are going to leave the faith that was once delivered unto them uh, by Jesus Christ, by the Holy Ghost. They're going to backslide. Man, some going to do that. Paul, in his message to Timothy, is, is literally telling him, you need to do certain things to prepare yourself so that you don't backslide. So that you don't be a casual. Yes. The Bible class tonight is about us not being a casualty. Amen? Us not backsliding. 
Yes. Because you can think that you're all so strong and be all so weak. Uh, deceiving your own self. Amen? Thank you. You don't want to be deceived. Be not deceived. <laughs> God is not what? Mock. Whatsoever a man what? Sow it. That shall he also what? Reap. There, there, there are some things that we have to do as an individual to save ourselves, amen, and them that would hear us. And, and if we don't follow the prescribed way, we can be overtaken by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. <clears throat> Am I right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not so spiritual that the enemy uh, can't, can't, can't attack my mind. Uh, that that can't do, that that can't. I'm not so spiritual that that the enemy uh, can't slip one in on me. Uh, I need God's help. I need the Holy Ghost's help. Amen. We need the help of the Lord. Amen. To help us, to lead us, and to guide us, uh, to warn us, and to advise us into all what truth. Am I right? He said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Yeah, man, it, it, shall, it shall make you free. Uh, another translation says it shall set you free. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and the, the key is freedom. Amen? Freedom. Freedom from what? Doctrines of devils. Freedom from sin. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. I want to be free. I don't want to be entangled again. Huh? Get entangled again. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. You can get entangled if you're not careful. Yeah. If you don't watch. If you don't pray. Now, what Paul, Paul is talking to us tonight. Let us slip down. Let us move down. Thank you, Jesus. To verse number uh, six. All right, y'all with me? Verse number six. Let's get to the meat of the matter because uh, I didn't spend way too much time in the beginning <laughs> in the introduction. But it was all necessary. It was all good. Wasn't it? I enjoyed the journey. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. Now, let's get to the meat of the matter. What must I do to be saved? Uh, what must I do to, 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 to not be a casualty? Verse number six says, he says, if you put the brother in the remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast what? Attained. Attain. Now, he's telling Timothy that in order for you not to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Notice what he says. He said, put the brethren in what? Remembrance of these things. So you've got to know, first of all, that the enemy is out there. That there's different doctrines that are out there. Amen? And be aware uh, to, 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 uh, when the, when the bell goes off, the red flag goes up, huh? be aware huh? and, 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 and reject it. Huh? And then when you see others operating in this kind of uh, foolishness, uh, you bring them to remembrance. Tell them to watch. Amen? Watch. Watch. Because, 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 you, you know, I like, that, I like that one saying that uh, they have it's like a public announcement. You see something, say something. Huh? Right, I like that too. See it, do something, say something. Amen? When you see damnable doctrine going on, that's not the time to be quiet. No. 
Thank you, Lord. What happens when you're quiet? You agree. You agree with it, and the enemy advances himself. But when you speak up, say something about it, at least puts it on the radar. I got quiet on that. All right. <laughs> He said, put the brethren in remembrance of those things, and if you, and if thou, thou, if thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in what? The word of faith. Amen. You've got to nourish yourself up uh, in the words of faith. Amen. How do you nourish yourself up in the words of faith? Faith cometh by what? And that by what? The word. You got to get in the word. Amen. And, and, and nourish yourself in the word. If, if you don't eat the word, you're going to be weak. You're going to die. If you don't build yourself up in the word, uh, the enemy can take you captive at his own will. The whole armor of God is the word of God. Uh, and, 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 and you've got to study the word to show yourself approved. Uh, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. The reason why a lot of people are weak is because they're not studying the word. They don't give themselves to the word. They're not meditating in the word. They don't build themselves up in the word. Uh, that word is a light. It's a lamp. Amen. Hallelujah. Thy word have I hid uh, in my heart uh, that I might not sin against thee. Thank you, Jesus. People, you know if 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 they they have that word in them because their conversation will be about the word. Huh? And their lifestyle will be about the word. Y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. Now notice what he said. Go ahead. When you get the word in you, you have to practice it too. Absolutely. 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 And I like that word she used, practice. Amen. That means participate in it. Uh, use it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Not just a hearer, but a what? Do. Doer is the one going to be blessed in all their needs. Yes, Lord. Amen? Yes. Simple stuff. But, 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 but the application becomes difficult for people. That's why you got so much chaos. Yes. Uh, even now, uh, uh, me saying uh, study the word. Uh, 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 the enemy is giving some pushback on that. Yeah. People think, oh, well, you know, well, I don't study it the way I should, but hey, God knows my heart. God knows my heart. You know? Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and study of the word, it's labor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not easy. <laughs> Thank you. you have to spend some time Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Now notice what he says. He says, uh, uh, nourished up in the words of faith and of what? Good doctrine. Remember what we said earlier about what doctrine is? Doctrine is that teaching that, that transforms you. Yes. Huh? If you're not nourished up in the doctrine of Jesus Christ, then you're not really being transformed into his image and into his likeness. Yes. Amen. That word transforms you. It brings you, it gives you a kingdom mindset. Amen. And if you're not being indoctrinated by, by, by the gospel of Jesus Christ, rest assured you're being indoctrinated in something else. Yes. Y'all with me? Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's not, it's not, it's not. Um, let me say it this way. The, the Bible tells you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. 
Now, now that, that scripture doesn't mean, okay, I, I hit a roadblock, I stop and I do nothing. Uh, because if you do nothing, you're going, you're going the opposite way because you're getting weak. Amen? Y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. So, so, so when it says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, you still got to build yourself up. You still got to pray in the Holy Ghost. So that when the Lord says move, you got enough strength to move. Deacon Fields? Christ, do what? Nourished up 
in the words of faith. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put people in remembrance. You gotta be nourished up. How? In the word of faith. That means you gotta get into a uh, 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 good doctrine. Amen. Good teaching. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And He's saying this expressly upon what the Spirit is saying. Man, he's not making this up. The Holy Ghost has already said in the latter time, some shall depart. There's going to be people that are going to depart. There's been people that have departed. Amen? And those that have not, de uh, those that have not departed have built themselves up, have studied the Word, they're established in the doctrine. They're nourished up in faith. That's what causes them to remain, to be able to sustain, to be able to stay. Not just survive, but to thrive uh, in God. Amen? Hallelujah. Now notice, notice what he said. He says, but refuse profane and wives Wives is wives, W-I-V-E-S. Some people would say that's stuff that your wife is telling you. <laughs> but he says, but refuse profane and wives. That's supposed to be wives. Fables. You know, we don't live by worldly fables. Chimney corner scripture. Huh? We live by truth and sound doctrine. That's why you gotta know what the truth is. People you know what made uh, uh, your former president so uh, uh, popular uh, with his followers? He would tell a lie, 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 and they just receive it. They believe it because he's saying it. He said it so often that they catch hold of it and run with it. Right, absolutely. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> he followed it. Thank you, Jesus. And, 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 you know, I'm going to just tell it myself. Uh, I, I used to lie, and, and I was at a, a funeral, and my one cousin said, Frankie, I just love to lie. And I said, me too. <laughs> uh, before I got saved, uh, me too. So, so that's a spirit. Uh, that's a spirit. Uh, and, and I would tell lies and believe my own lies. Uh, that, that's what the devil told me. He said, now, if you want to be a good liar, you got to believe your lies. That way, you know, uh, you act it out. <laughs> believe it. That's the devil. Huh? A lot of that stuff Trump saying, he probably believe it. You follow? You got to watch. <laughs> Notice, notice, notice. He said, but refuse profane and all wise fables and exercise thyself unto what? God. God. Now, that, 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 that exercise is what Mother Davis was saying about us practicing. Amen? That word exercise, that's where they get the word gymnasium from. Amen? And when you go to the, the gymnasium, you do what? Exercise. When you come into holiness, you should exercise holiness. Amen? And, and you should come to a gymnasium, which is the church. Amen? Bible study. Huh? So, so that you can build up huh, yourself. Now, those people that are serious about their workouts, they don't just go in there haphazardly and work out. Uh, they study how to work out. They practice their workout. Don't they? Don't, they got a routine in their workout. Don't they? They work on muscle groups. Don't they? Uh, uh, they, they, they deny uh, uh, outside things that, that would influence their body that would hinder their workout. Don't they? How much more should we put in the work for godliness? Uh, be intentional about
about godly living. Be intentional uh, about your salvation. Uh, work out uh, uh, different levels of faith. Uh, work out. Oh, come on out now. I feel like preaching right now. Uh, work out. Hallelujah. Uh, your, your level of faith. Work out your spiritual love one for another. Work out. You see deficiencies within yourself. Huh? You don't just let that stuff go. If I, if I know I got a deficiency in my love, huh? work out. <laughs> Build it up. I got a deficiency in my faith. Work out. Build it up. Huh? I'm being fought with giving. Work out. Build it up. Overcome it. You follow me? Uh, I got a problem with backbiting. <laughs> Work out. Huh? Build, build up your faith. Overcome it. Overcome every deficiency. Be intentional. Y'all with me? That takes work, though. Work. Thank you, Lord. And you know, uh, some bodybuilders, they put up a picture of what they want to be like. They get an image. Yeah. Amen? They get a vision yeah. of what they want to be like. Amen? Do you have a vision, an image of what you want to be like? Jesus. <laughs> want to be like him. Yeah. Amen? So that means you got to work out. <laughs> oh, if you want to be like Jesus, you got to work out. Yeah. Am I right? Amen. It ain't just going to happen. Got to put in the work. Right. Brother Quinn, Miss yeah, Quinn. That's the same thing, Bishop, when, you, when, when, when people ask in the church, they don't know. They, they should have, they should look for watered down gospel. Right. They should, they, should, they should want the truth. Truth. But with the truth, like the fasting and praying, that's work. That's work. Work. Big work. work. And that's what you need to grow. Amen. Amen. Why? Because you got an adversary. You got an adversary that's formidable. Amen? The only, the only way to defeat the devil is through God's weapons and his strategy. You can't defeat the devil by any other means. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. And that's going to take some work. All right? Understand what he says. He says, and exercise thyself rather unto what? Godliness. Huh? Unto godliness. Godliness and holiness are synonymous. They mean the same thing. Godliness and holiness are equal. If you're going to live, live a godly, holy life. Nothing else will do. Mind made up. Be holy. What? For I'm holy. Then he said, be like your heavenly father, which is in heaven. Perfect. Holy. Amen. And, and without the which, no man shall what? See the Lord. You won't be able to understand him. You won't be able to, 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 under, uh, to fathom him. You follow me? So, so, Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred. Ninety-nine and a half won't do Holiness is what I live for. <laughs> Holiness. Go ahead. Hey! Hey, welcome back, Deep. You've been gone a long time from my Bible study. And you back. Go ahead. Paul was trying to encourage Timothy. Yeah. Uh, sometimes people think the road is easy. Right.
Right. Yeah. Because the Spirit speaketh expressly that these things will happen. Amen? But our job is not to get caught up in it. Uh, that, that one song, I, I, uh, you know, I understand it. But that song that says, there's a storm out over the ocean and it's moving this old way. If your soul's not what? Angered in Jesus, you shall surely what? Drift away, and then they get caught up in the refrain. Drift away, Lord. Drift away. Now, I don't like that. Amen. Come on, because I ain't trying to drift away. <laughs> uh, I don't want to drift away. I want to I wanna be steadfast, uh, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. And when you understand the concept of drifting away, it literally means uh, 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 to have a, a ship that's, that's uh, 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 anchored to the dock. It becomes unloosed. And then the, the waves, the, the, the weight, uh, moves it away from the dock. And it does it so suddenly and so smoothly until when you wake up and, and look to see. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, help us. Yes. Help us. Yes, Lord. I don't want to be wise in my own conceits. Huh? I don't want to be uh, in a place where the Holy Ghost can't correct me. Huh? I don't want to be in a place where, as the scripture says, uh, every man is wise in his own eyes. Huh? I don't want to be like that. I want a little child to be able to say, uh-uh, don't say that. That was wrong. And I receive. Right. Amen? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. My God. This is a good Bible study here. Where we at? What verse we in? Verse 8? Oh, Jesus. All right. Verse 8. All right, okay, now we're talking about exercise thyself unto godliness, holiness. That's what he's talking about. I want you to get that in your mind. Holiness and godliness has to be exercised. Amen? You got to build yourself into, up into it. You got to be intentional about it. Like a bodybuilder, they're intentional. Amen? What Paul is really after, he's saying that if you uh, uh, put in half the amount of exercise people do uh, uh, in their bodies in, in godliness, we'll be further up the road. Amen. Mm. You follow? So notice what he says. He says, for bodily exercise, what? Profit. Now, he's not saying that there's no profit in it. And he's not saying don't exercise physically. But he's saying when it's compared to godliness, yes. <laughs> it's a little profitable. What's the more, what's the more profitable? The spiritual. Amen? Amen? We should always put God first. Amen. Take care of your body. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen? You follow? They go, but, but, but what's more needful? Spirit. The spiritual. Godliness. Holiness. Yes. Notice. He says, but godliness is profitable unto what? All things. All things. Notice. Having promise of the life that now is and that which is what? To come. God, God is Filled holiness with promises. Amen? Promises now we can enjoy and promises when, when we get to heaven. Uh, and we're not going to spend all our time in heaven. You're going to come back into this earth. Because you're going to make a new heaven and a new earth. Who will have, inhabit the new earth? You are. 
You follow me? You have access to both. <laughs> My God. Notice this. Notice this. He says, For this is a faithful saying and worthy of what? All acceptation. Now, he said, What I'm telling you is faithful and it's worthy of your acceptance. Uh huh. Because we what? Trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially those that what? Believe. Now note, I like the wording that he uses. He says labor. Right? It's work. It's work, isn't it? Yes, amen. <laughs> Gotta put in the work. And then, not only is it work, but you're going to suffer some reproach. You're not going to be like. Huh? By, by a, 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 a lot of people. Amen? You're going to rub some folks the wrong way. Just your very presence. Jesus said if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Am I right? Notice what he said. Straight is the gate. Uh, now is the way that leadeth to life. Very few find that. But broad is the way. And what? Wide is the gate that leads where? And many go in there. What was Jesus' advice to you concerning that scripture? Enter ye. Go in the straight gate. Amen. That means if you go live holy, you go labor. You gonna have some reproach. So when people talk about you yes. for being too holy, yes. rejoice yes. Uh, and be exceedingly glad. Yes. Why? Because great is your reward in heaven. Mm. Count it all joy, all joy when you go through diverse temptation. Yes. Yes, Am I right? Yes. Hallelujah. And don't think it's strange when folk talk about you. Put your name out as evil. Don't want to get with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Thank you. You with me? All right. Now, notice this. It says, it says, uh, for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the what? The living God. Yep. Yeah, when you trust in the living God, you're going to labor and suffer reproach. All right? Who is the savior of all men, especially of those that what? Believe, because you, no, no. not everybody is going to be saved. Yes, Lord. Not everybody that call him Lord is going to uh, hear well done thy good and faithful servant. Amen? No. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice this. These things do what? Command and teach. Why? Because the commandments of the Lord uh, uh, establishes his kingdom. You being taught his commandments causes you to be in the kingdom. All right? So you've got to have his teaching. Am I right? 
What did Jesus say? He said, I'll show you who a wise man is that did what? Built their house upon a rock. Amen? He that heareth these sayings of mine and what? Do it then. Is it important? Is it important to hear and to do? So, so let this Bible study inspire you. If there's areas that you need to tighten up on, tighten up. Thank God. Praise your God. Amen. You know, uh, the one song that I like uh, about David uh, when he had went into Bathsheba and uh, it was exposed that uh, he had done wrong by the prophet. He wrote the psalm and uh, then he said in that psalm, Lord created me a clean heart. Uh, and we do what? Renew a right spirit within me. Father, then he said, uh, uh, Lord, don't take your spirit away from me. Father, then he said, if you do all that for me, Lord, then will I teach transgressors thy way. Amen? Meaning that, Lord, I need you to help me to get back on track. The Lord sends his word to help us. Amen? To get back on track. Amen? Because God still wants to use us. As long as you got breath in your body, God wants to use you. Amen? There's always an opportunity for God to use you. Amen? Uh, but, but, but notice what David said. Lord, you do all this for me. Make me holy again. Clean me up. Then will you be able to Amen. Lord, got to clean us up. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sanctify you. Set you apart for his use. That's a glorious thing. And also, Bishop, when you talk about being, being, um, um, being in that, that, that same, well, in that same chapter, in that same, that same verse, how, how we are, how we are perplexed, um, being against, but also in the book of Second Second um, Corinthians, in the uh, in the sixth chapter, we are troubled on every side. Yes, but yet not despair. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Yeah, and and that's that's just telling me that being. Sometimes we 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 gonna go through hardship. We gonna go through yes. our problems, serving serving the Lord. Amen. But He's not gonna leave us or mm. forsake us. That's right. Amen. 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 That, that's that's the scripture. Amen. And He said, if you don't suffer with Him, you can't reign with Him. Yes, Lord. Amen. Paul said, Hey, I bury my body the dying of the Lord Jesus every day. Amen. He said, For this cause, I bow my knees daily. Amen. Thank you. It means something. Amen. Even in your suffering, even in your testing trials, rejoice. Give God praise. Amen. Magnify God. Hallelujah. Deep. Hebrews. What's that? 
Huh? Stuff like that. Silliness, foolishness. Ain't that something? All right, where we at? Let's go. No, uh, 12, thank you. Let no man despise thy youth. He's telling Timothy, uh, I like this because he's talking to Timothy as a young man. He was about 30 or 40, but he was around some elders. So he's saying to Timothy, let no, no man despise thy youth. In other words, Paul was saying to Timothy, <coughs> don't act like a young punk. That's what he's telling him. Uh, and do, do, do any and everything. Be mature. Let the, Ghost Let the Holy Ghost lead you. Let the Holy Ghost lead you. Right. Right. Exactly. Don't, don't make foolish decisions that's immature, that's going to affect your position. Just because you say you're young, but don't be dumb. That's, that's what he tells me. Father, and be mature, be responsible. Isn't that what we put in our children? Be responsible. Make right, good decisions. Y'all with me? Yeah. So, so then that way people don't despise you. He was in a position of leadership. Yeah. And if he was, he's saying, if you're acting immature, reckless, then how can you lead? Come on now. Come on. Amen? Right. So God is. God is moving you to a position of, of, of leadership. Yes, Lord. Amen? Influence. Yes. Even if you ain't leading the congregation, you got influence. Right. Uh, so don't, don't, don't be foolish. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Don't live your life reckless. Yes. Brother Quinn? And, and also, Timothy was very young right. in the ministry. And he had like, older people in the church. Right. Trying to tell him, probably trying to tell him what to do, or my attitude, you know, sometimes in the church. Right. I could be saying, well, she ain't gonna do it, they ain't gonna do it, I need to do it myself. Mm -hmm. I could be saying, well, if they ain't gonna do it, well, I don't wanna do it, you know, I can't have the attitude like that. God, no. God, God, don't appreciate that. No, no. And, and you know, also, too, uh, as you were speaking, I'm reminded of, of, of Solomon's son, Rehoboam, who, who uh, took the helm as king. The people would follow him if he would just concede to some of their desires. But he told them, taking counsel from his, his counterparts, his young people, be harder on them than your dad. Follow? He rejected the wisdom of the council. You know? Don't reject the wisdom of older people. Yes. He did that. And then when he went and made his speech, said, I'm going to be harder on you than my father was as a scorpion. Follow? Mm. Uh, it divided the kingdom. He despised his youth. Mm. Didn't take wisdom. Didn't take counsel. Mm. And he took it from <laughs> uh, his buddies. It always bothered me with my children. Mm. All right? You're going to take counsel from your buddies that's just as old as you is. They live a moment longer than you. <laughs> and, and, and forsake the counsel of your parents. That got all good intentions for you. That bothered me with my children. I always told them that. <laughs> Amen. Y'all with me tonight? Amen. Um, go ahead. Yeah. 
Counsel of your mother and your father. Huh? Don't he tell you that? Monique, I'm sure you probably sit up at night and say, Man, I wish I listened to my dad and my mom. <laughs> All right, where we at? Notice he said, uh, What verse? Y'all gotta help me out. 12, okay? It says, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou what? Be an example, amen, of the believers. Be an example of the believers. Now, now notice, be an example in word. So you got to know the word. Amen? He says, in, in conversation. In, in their time, conversation meant intercourse or conduct. Follow me? How you relate late. How you interact. In other words, walk worthy of the vocation where it you've been called. Notice then, in charity, we know charity means what? The love. Right? Show the love of Christ. Am I right? In spirit. And spirit means have the right attitude. Do things the right way, with the right attitude. You can have love, but not do it in the right attitude. It profiteth you nothing. Am I right? Huh? Now notice. Then he says, in faith and what? In purity. Be pure. Be pure in your actions. Be pure in your motives. Don't be deceitful. Don't have ulterior motives. Paul is teaching something. Be honest. Am I right? Thank you. Wow. That's a tall order, isn't it? <laughs> Just being honest is tall order. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you know, we got, I'll use Noel Jones' word, we got a proclivity uh, to a bet on doing what's, what's evil. Amen? Amen. Hang on. You gotta, you gotta work with yourself to do what's right. Sometimes you gotta talk yourself through doing what's right. <laughs> Filled with the Holy Ghost. Baptized in Jesus' name. Still got to talk yourself through. Just got up for prayer. Got to talk yourself through. <laughs> All right. Where we at? 13. 13. Till I come, give attendance to what? There he is. He said, read. Huh? Give, give, give yourself to reading the word. Amen? If you're not reading the word on a daily basis, then, then you're not doing the will of God. Read. Alright? Then he says, give attendance to reading, to exhortation. And that exhortation means encouragement. Amen? Encourage somebody. Hopefully you encourage them with the word. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you. Um, give yourself to reading, to exhortation, and to what? There's that word doctrine again. Doctrine assimilates you into the kingdom. If you don't have his doctrine, you're not a part of his kingdom. Take a feel. Right. 
With the Lord. And that brings us to, let's drop down to verse 15. Meditate on these things. Huh? Give some undivided attention. Muse it around in your mind with good intent of, Lord, how am I, how, if I'm faced with situations, this is how I'm going to handle it. Got to put it in your mind. Amen? When you read his word, something comes up. You say, okay, when, 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 when a situation comes around like this, this is how I'm going to respond. Meditate on it. That's what meditation is. Not just, not just thinking about it, but thinking how to put it into action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Go ahead. Question, Bishop. Uh, when, you, when you meditate, also, are you saying to that I'm examining myself at the same time? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That goes along with it. Amen? I want to put it this way. When you're reading the word of God, it's examining you. You don't want to be like what James says. Once a person reads the word, straightway they leave the word forgetting what manner of person they were. Amen? Notice the word. It's quick. It's powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even and dividing asunder the soul and the spirit. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intent of your heart. It's examination. So, so when you're reading, you have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Amen. So if you're not Ooh. honest with yourself, you're never exercising, you're never living. Right. So you gotta be honest with yourself. With yes. Oh my God. If it finds you, say out. And say, Lord, I'm gonna do better. And, and you know, we should really rejoice because if it finds us, then it, God's given us grace. He's given us an opportunity to get it better. Yeah. What does he say about correction, instruction, and righteousness? Right? Then he says, uh, them whom I love, I what? I chase and I correct. Holy Ghost is always correcting me. Holy Ghost should always be correcting you. And then you should take heed. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. I got to say this. When the Holy Ghost corrects us, it's literally saving us from danger up the road. Huh? Trying to get us a, a, to avoid struggle and problem, whooping, death, danger. It warns us. It advises us. Take heed. Amen? All right, I got to go. Jesus, y'all took up some of my time. Now I answered some questions. All right, he said, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. W-H-O-L-L-Y. That means totally, right? That thy profiting may appear to who? Oh, now verse 8, 16. Take heed unto thyself. Because the Spirit is speaking expressly. That in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith. Therefore, take heed to thyself. Amen? Check yourself before you what? And unto, there that word it goes again, doctrine. Doctrine. Continue where? In them. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt do what? Save thyself and who else? Right. Not everybody going to hear you, but somebody going to hear you. 
and you and they can be saved. Man, I enjoyed that tonight. And we certainly thank and praise God for everybody. And we praise God for each and every soul that has pressed their way on tonight to be with us. And those that want to give through tithing, you have the opportunity to give. And those that uh, want to be with us again on Sunday, you have the opportunity to be with us Sunday at 11 a.m. We thank God for you. May heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, for those that are listening uh, right now. We ask you, Lord, that you stretch out your hand and bless them in a mighty way. We ask you, Lord, that you even bless uh, Brother Jamil, Lord, touch his body, send for healing and deliverance. Remember Brother Stanley, remember Sister Cora in a special way, and all others, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Remember Sister Tanya, uh, Mr. Grady, hallelujah, and all others. Thank you, Lord, that need prayer, that need grace, that need strength. And Lord, the names would be too innumerable for us to call here on this hour. But Lord, you know, you see, and you understand. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you bless by your power, by your might, and through the Holy Ghost anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. Press the minister.